Hi guys, this is Moran Pobert and today I'm going to show you how to investigate and analyze your next investment and how to make sure you're making no mistakes when you're doing your next investment. So let's get to it. And yeah, if you like this type of content, definitely subscribe, comment below, let me know what you think, what kind of deals you want to look at, what would be the, the just comment below, let me know right now, what would be the ideal business to have for you? Like if you could own any business in the world, what would be, what business would that be? What sector would that be? And I'd love to, to see that and, and give you feedback. So if you watch some of my other videos, I gave you ways on how to go out there, find deals, start to, I guess, get in front of business owners and start the conversations of you going out there, investing in their deal, buying their business and all that. So if you look at my other videos and I'll post them below, definitely you should have some kind of a list of potential businesses you want to buy or invest in or, or whatever. And this video is all about how do we, we filter those deals that we looked at and how do we then segment them and get into a point where we then go meet the owner and then obviously moving forward with that deal to a point where, yeah, we can potentially buy that business and own that business. But I guess the main thing to focus on is how can we take that huge list that we have potentially and only focus on the most important, I guess, opportunities so we don't get overwhelmed with too many. Now, the reason we're doing that, and that's a sentence that I heard from um, Dan Pena said it, but it said that his mentor is saying that, that the more you investigate, the less you'll need to invest. And the reason we're saying that is because we eventually want to filter as many deals as possible. It's numbers games, guys. Like we said in pretty much all of my videos, most of the deals that you look into, you won't buy them, you won't invest in them, but you need to kiss lots of frogs, as, as Dan is saying in order to find your prints, in order to find the deal that you actually want to buy and invest in. The question is, how do we filter them as fast as possible so we actually get the deals that we want? Now, when I'm talking about those opportunities and approaching businesses, obviously I'm assuming that you have some kind of a dream team, some kind of a board member, some kind of, I guess, partners that have experience in that field. Because when you're going to approach business owners, again, if you have no experience and no understanding of that sector or just doing deals in general, you're going to look like an amateur. So. Uh, you need to have people behind you with experience, people with deal experience, people, people with sector experience, obviously people that understand numbers and accountants and lawyers and all that stuff. And by the way, a few people reached out to me to potentially use me and my team as partners. So if you want to learn more about that, definitely look at the details below. We giving people, few people the opportunity to watch our back while we are doing deals and definitely uh, have the opportunity to then partner on deals together. So if you want to learn about that, definitely look look at, it, at the description below. But in general, just to summarize that, that short few uh, sentences, you want to get to a point where when you talk to business owners, they look at you as someone who is credible or someone who is legit and not someone who's just talking to uh, their first or just want to have his first business ever. You're just going to look amateurs and someone who's looking to sell a million dollar business you want to make sure he's selling it to the right buyer. He's not, you don't want to sell it to someone he don't know just because, and just to give you an example, most of the deals that we're looking at, we're going to pay a, a nice sum of the amount over a period of time. So the seller won't sell it to someone he is, he's not believing in because he's basically going to think, Hey, I'm going to sell that business to someone I don't know, have no business experience, no one behind him, no capital. So what are the chances that this business, my baby is going to shut down? and I'm not going to get paid the deferred amount that we agreed on. And that's crucial. And when they see that you have a team behind you, someone with experience, they're going to trust you much more, uh, I guess, to, to hand over the business for you because they know, hey, those guys know business. They know how to handle things. Yes, I'm going to get paid something at closing, but I know I'm very certain that I'll get paid over time as well, just because I believe in the team. I believe in those people. The, biz the biggest thing with in in investigation of deals is just putting in the time and Many times it's not going to be you personally who are going to do it. Obviously, it depends what team you have behind you. But you want to have professionals who are going to look into each deal. Many times after you look at a deal enough, you're going to figure out, hey, this, is deal. this deal is not for me. Like, uh, there's just no way I'm going to do it. And the only reason that you're going to skip that deal is just because you decided to put a bit more time. So the biggest first lesson is just put enough time into each deal because you'll see most of the deals that you're looking into, you'll just skip them, you'll understand, hey, those deals are not making sense to me. Obviously, it depends on what your investment criteria and what deals you're looking at. But you'll figure out that most deals are just not good enough or just the terms that you're looking for are not there. And there's no, uh, I guess, win-win scenarios between you and the owner. So 
uh, I guess uh, again to summarize the first big lesson is just put in enough time into each of those deals. Don't look at your first deal and after a few hours of just investigating it, say, hey, this is the perfect deal for me and I'm just focusing on that. And, and the main lesson is just don't fall in love with a transaction. You need to understand there's no emotion in business. It's just making the right decisions. Don't be emotionally depressed or needy about a deal just because there's so many deals out there you need to really understand hey is this good for me or not and if it's not just keep on there's so many deals and opportunities out there one of the main next lessons to focus on is just the people you work with so when you're going to look into a deal again investment or in our case we're looking into a business to buy we're going to talk to the business owner and you need to understand in the end of the day business is people and if you work with people that you don't like in my opinion just not worth it and more than that is just making sure those people are honest. So for us, when we look into a deal, if we're talking to a business owner and we figure out that he's lying to us for so, in something small and it's gonna be early in the transaction, we're probably gonna skip it as soon as possible. Just because if you feel like something isn't honest from the get-go, like there's a big chance that there's something won't be honest eventually when we actually gonna be close to do the deal or even later when we're gonna buy the business potentially that owner is going to work with us for, for us or at least in a transition period so if there's some uh, something that is, there's just not 100 integrity there um, potentially i would skip that deal immediately now as, as dan Pena is saying the deal is either hot or not and it, it just many times as much as i said hey you need to investigate deals enough and get to a point where you look at the, those deals for enough times I think the opposite is true as well. You need to find the balance between those two because the the deal is either good or not. Like in in my case right now with our team, like I personally can look at a deal and the numbers and literally within 30 minutes tell you, hey, this is a do we deal with a potential or not based on obviously all the, the numbers I have and the understanding of the business. Like my partner Carl Allen, he's probably can do it. He probably can do it within five or 10 minutes. Like he can look at a deal. He can look at the numbers and say, Hey, this is what we can raise. This is the owner psychology. This is what we can potentially do with the business. Yes or not. Now, many times people dwell on a deal too much. So we need to find the right balance between, yes, you want to investigate a deal, make sure the deal makes sense. But then the deal is either good or not. The terms are either there. The business is either there. We can either raise the capital for that deal or not. And if we're not, just move on. Don't be emotionally attached to a specific deal. Like anything in life, guys, it's just not worth it. You need to move on to get the results you want. Don't be dwell on just one specific deal because there's something inside you saying, hey, I got to just have this business. Well, at the same time, you wasted on a deal that got no chance. You could focus your efforts on other opportunities and have a deal much faster that way. So after we went through that first phase, I guess the next phase is obviously, like we said, we have few opportunities that we we'll look into. Now that the thing is inside your head is how you get to a point where you have meeting with those business owners and how do you build rapport with those business owners and show them enough credibility and authority to get to a point where you can get to a point where you look at the numbers, you get financials, you then can make an offer to the business and potentially buy it. So how the process looks like, like let's get into that. So to begin with, like I said, you want to have a team behind you. If you're going on your own, you have no experience, you're just going to look uh, like an amateur. You want to have a team behind you, people with experience. Obviously, like I said, someone who would understand finance, someone who understand legal, someone who understand deals, and someone who understand the sector. If you have that experience behind you, that track record, I mean, you can bring all that to the table. Obviously, you need financial partners with you as well to finance the deal. And when you go with all that to potential business owner, to a potential seller, things are just looking different. And just by that fact alone but they by you having a team behind you you can then approach a business owner and he's going to be much more comfortable to share with you pretty much everything you know about this business like just think about it most of those business owners that we're talking to they are owning those businesses many times 5 10 20 plus years maybe and just by the idea of them giving you access to everything to the financials to the clients list to the to, to the employees everything their process their marketing systems they need to really trust you and one of the main reasons to begin with is just to have good fundamentals to come in with a good team obviously you need to have some kind of human skills to just show hey i, I I'm, I'm a person i'm not something weird because the reason you need to have those fundamentals is because many times and I heard horror stories in the past is that competitors can come in 
And even if they don't say that they're, they're competitors, they can come into a business, get access to all the details and then back off the deal with all that data, many times stealing employees, stealing clients, lists, stealing literally all their systems and processes just by having access to that business for, from being a potential buyer. And I saw literally horror stories of businesses that got shut down because they thought someone is going to buy them. But during that process, of due diligence of looking into those businesses eventually that person who said he's going to buy them just stole everything and literally left that business with nothing that business had to shut down because his competitors stole everything from them and there's nothing he could do with it so that's why business owners first of all are afraid to open their books to people they don't know and at the same time they do want to sell their business. So how do you find the balance? It's just having good fundamentals, having a team behind you, and then go approach those business owners. Now, one of the main ways to, uh, I guess, protect the owner is signing what we call an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. And I'll probably going to create a separate video just on that, but it's basically a way to protect the owner from you sharing all the information. In the end of the day, uh, I never saw or heard about anyone who's, uh, I guess, being sued for, for doing something with within the NDA, uh, I guess, agreement. But it's just another great way to build rapport when you go into an interaction and say, hey, I'm more than happy to sign an NDA for you to be willing to share with me your information. It just looks like you know what you're doing. You're a professional, you've done that before. And it's just a way for you to get, I guess, to, to the next level in the rapport phase when we talk to a business owner. Another main thing when you, obviously you have the list of potential businesses you want to, I think a main key thing for you to understand is you don't want to talk to all of those businesses at the same time. So let's say you have a list of 100 businesses that you originated. Don't focus on all of them initially, just because you're going to be too much overwhelmed. You're not going to be focused. You're not going to put in enough time into each of those deals and you're just going to be all over the place. I think you really need to be focused. Don't work on more than, let's say, five, 10, maybe 20 deals at the same time, especially if you have a team around you. But remember, your focus is to build rapport with each of those owners. And it's just going to be so difficult to do this if you're going to approach 100 percent, 100 businesses at the same time. So how do we filter from 100 potential deals to, let's say, 10 or 20? To begin with, what I would do is go there, uh, like literally just open like an Excel sheet or something, a Google sheet and write everything you can on each of those businesses. Write everything you know, everything you find online their website, their details, like everything you can find about those businesses, put it inside a document that organized everything. Like make sure you have everything you can, like the owner name, the details, contact details, what do you think the revenues, profit, assets, uh, employees, numbers, like whatever, whatever you can find online. Like nowadays with all the data uh, sites, you can find those information online without, before even talking to those owners. So make sure before you even approach them, just put everything so you have everything in front of you and then you can i guess filter what you want based on your criteria. so after you put everything in in the list and you're just making sure you you start to build the funnel like we have we did in the sales video it's the same process apply here buying a business or investment investing in a business it's very similar to selling a product you just making sure you have enough list of prospects and then you just put them in through a funnel until you close one or few of them so ideally Put in your mind the fact that you want to have 100 list of 100 businesses and then filter them through your criterias until you have your main ones to focus and really put all your your efforts into them and in your list make sure you have things like what do you know about their like i said before revenues profit put your passion as well so if you're more passionate about that business put that in the list as well if you have uh, if you're thinking about the idea of owning that business and you're more excited about it, put it there as well. Have some kind of a number from one to 10 of how much I'm passionate about that opportunity, how proud I'll be of myself if I own that business and have that in the list and put everything in kind of a list that can show you, hey, this is the main business. This would be the ideal business for me, combining the revenues, the location, my passion, my potential expertise in that business, how, how much value I can add to that business using my contacts, my experience, my my whatever, my capital. So put everything in a list so you could do, watch everything in, in one page. Now remember, if you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel, comment below, let me know what would be the, the best or, or what would be your main focus when you filter a deal. Would that be 
and location? Would that be a specific type of business? Would that just be the size of revenues or profit in that business? Like what would be your main focus when you look into a business? Comment below right now, let me know what you think. Now in the list, no, you don't, you want to get into really that in depth into those businesses just because in the end of the day when you're going to approach those businesses and sign in the end get financials and detailed information you're going to be too much into the process already but you if you're going to get there it's going to take you so much time if you didn't filter things before so when you put your initial filter list make sure you have things like what do you know about your product what do you know about their clients what do you know about their ways of getting a client? And if needed, just, just call the business. Just be in front of their sales process. Subscribe to their email list. Look what emails they're sending you. Look look, look how their salespeople are approaching you. And just learn everything you can about their product, about their service, customer support. Like you want to get to a point where you eventually talk to that business owner. You know so much about that business. And it's just a great way for you to build rapport with that person too. When you go and talk to those owners and tell them, hey, look, I know that you did it and that, and I think you can do this better or that better. It's gonna make you make your life so much easier because you can build rapport so fast with those people then. And then to, to finalize that list, is that in my opinion is what we call like a gut feeling. Just put some kind of a number of what's your gut feeling about this deal. Like from one to 10, how much do you want to own this business? And how much do you feel you have a chance to buy that business based on just what you see online? So for example, if I see like an old website, I have a very, I guess, good sense of gut feeling say, telling me, hey, this owner is not really putting his effort into that business anymore. In my opinion, there is a potential, first of all, to, to get into this business and really help it grow and, and get better. But then it's also a matter of seeing that the owner is just not putting that much effort into the business, into the business as much as he could. So maybe he's just not really interested in owning that business. So combine that with the location of that business, with the sector, with your knowledge, with your background, with everything you can and put that into a list and get to a point where you have like your main top businesses that you'd like to approach. And then it's just about putting your efforts 100% into, into all of them. And it's just a matter of how much time you have. If you have more time in the day, uh, maybe focus on 20 businesses. If you have less time, I would start with just like five and start then approaching them and really getting into detailed conversations with those owners. I'm gonna talk more about that in future videos, like how do you build more, more rapport? What kind of information do you wanna get from the owner? What questions you can even ask him in order to position yourself as an authority in the field? So uh, we'll definitely get to that in the future. Um, but if you wanna, uh, I guess, guess, get those videos, definitely subscribe. Let, let your friends know. Let me know in the comment below who is a friend of yours that you think could uh, I guess learn from those videos or maybe who, who, which friends do you want as, as an owner potentially with you as a partner and bring them to this channel I'd love it I think I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to learn and potentially maybe own businesses together in the future um, I'm not hiding my agenda my agenda here is to get more deal flow in the end of the day so um, I'd love to get in front of more people and uh, if you like this type of content definitely let your friends know and subscribe and comment and uh, yeah hope you enjoy it I'll see you soon